Hey guys, this is Nick from Django FX, and I'm going to be showing you how to make this particle right here in the center. What this tutorial is going to cover is basically how you export vector fields from Vector Region and get them into Unreal Engine 4. So we're going to walk through the process of creating a vector field that has turbulence that pulls inward. So basically it's an inward turbulence field. Uh, and then from there, we're going to export it and bring it into Unreal Engine 4 and create a particle system from scratch to create pretty much what you see here. So, without further ado, let's go ahead and jump into Vector Region and let's get started. So, uh, whenever you launch Vector Region, you should see something similar to this. I'm using version 1.02. This may be out for you if you are watching this like a week from January 20th, 2018. Uh, but if you're watching it before, uh, this may not be out yet, so we'll see. Anyway, uh, you'll see some new features in the software, and uh, we'll just go ahead and work with them. So basically, the first thing we want to do is we want to create a point that all the particles are attracted to so that we can just get some of the basis down of uh, the particle motion that we want to emulate. So to do that, we right click in our node graph, and you can see that node graph is selected up here in this tab, right? And so we right click in our node graph, and we bring it down a fade, and by default, you should have a point fade pop up. We have a different type of fade called line fade. If you double click the node, you'll see that the vector starts showing, and you can see that the delta of this vector field is basically saying that from the center point of this vector field, the vectors are going from a length of zero to one. And you can see that here, the minimum is zero and the maximum is one. And the problem with this is, if we go ahead and start our particle system, we can see that the particles are going outwards outside the field. That's not what we want. We don't want them to go inside. So how do we do that? We simply reverse the maximum to negative one. So now it's going from zero to negative one on the outside. The problem with this is the particles slow down in the center because uh, obviously it's going down to zero. So what we need to do is create uh, the minimum to be negative one as well. Now you can see that we have a constant speed from the edge of the vector field to the center. The next part is we want to create a rotation around the center axis which is at the origin zero, zero, zero. To do this, all we gotta do is just come in, uh, bring in a rotate node double click it and now you'll see that we have the axis is in the z-axis and we can see that indicated by this blue line in the gizmo and then obviously we have y and x so right now uh, we want to rotate around the z-axis and to do that let's go ahead and just put 90 in our angle and now you'll see that the particles are indeed rotating around this and if we want to we can visualize this more by changing our spawn rate inside of vector region and now you can see that we have a bunch of particles going towards the center now uh, the thing with this is is that it's not turbulent enough and it's not going into the center it's just rotating around the center so to solve the first problem or sorry the second problem which is it's not rotating into the center just around it what we need to do is increase the angle so let's see, so nope, so increasing it puts it outwards and then decreasing the angle below 90 degrees should start making it go towards the center. Okay, and so let's just uh, double click, type 45, and to override any value you can also control click. And so we'll type 45 degrees, and so it's gonna be a 45 degree rotation into the center. And now you can see that if we hide our uh, vectors uh, our, our vector visualization arrows with control S or alt S, the same thing, uh, you can see that the particles are going into the center. You can also cut the vector field in half to see, oh yeah, okay, everyone's going to the center, and that's done by using control W. You can see all the shortcuts up here in the essential shortcuts menu. So, what's next? Now we need some turbulence. And so to do that, let's go ahead and bring in a random node we'll double click it and then we'll see that we got a bunch of turbulence let's just create a random seed and we'll just say random seed 100 so if you want to do exactly what mine is use seed 100 and you'll see that it looks something like this 
I don't really care to normalize it because that would make every single vector equal one. I don't care. So what we're gonna do is just bring in and interpolate because now we need to get this mixed in with this node. And to do that, we just do a linear interpolation. So we plug these two together and we double click the interpolate node and nothing happens. And of course, uh, if you wanna preview your nodes or export, you double click. And so, or sorry, to export, you need to double click a node. So if I wanted to export this, I just go to the export tab, click export. If I wanted to export this, you know, I double click it, go to the export tab, and same thing. So right now we have this interpolate node, and the problem is uh, there's just a random field it's choosing. So basically this is input A and input B. And if we want to blend them, we need to change this interpolation uh, to something below one. And so now you can see that we have a turbulent uh, inward rotation. And if we spawn our preset, uh, turbulent rotational attraction, uh, it looks basically the same. So here we go. That's basically it. Uh, and what we're going to do is just double click this interpolate node. And from here, we're going to go to export. And we're going to call this uh, inward turbulence. Oh, turbulence tutorial and so make sure that you have the .fga if you export it without this .fga it's just going to be a blank file and Unreal Engine 4 won't be able to read it now you'll see that the export button is green and we'll click it and now it turns red basically it's just saying hey as you can see on the screen file already exists please rename your file so what you need to do now is go to the folder that your exe is located in and you will see right here, let me drag this over, you'll see that in my folder I have Inward Turbulence Tutorial. So I'm going to go ahead and pop open Unreal Engine 4, I'm going to bring over my content browser, and I'm going to go to Vector Fields, and we're going to do Inward Turbulence Tutorial. Alright, and so let me go ahead and just save, just in case I crash. We'll see. Anyway, uh, Unreal is unstable sometimes. So, what we need to do now is, uh, first off, create the material. In this case, I'm not going to walk through it. Uh, you should know how to create a basic material in Unreal. But basically, I'm just using a radiant, gradial, radiant, sorry, radial gradient exponential and plugging it into a multiply and getting the particle color uh, and then putting that into both base color and emissive color and then plugging the gradient into opacity mask. So basically, this is just a masked material. And if we see it here, this is what it looks like. It's really simple, and I'm doing this so that I can get some unique colors out of it. That's why I'm using masked and default lit. So, from here, we're gonna go to our new particle system. And actually, what we need to do is I'm gonna just go to a particles folder and right click, create new particle system. And we'll just call this a uh, tutorial. And we'll go ahead and double click it and save it. And from here, what we need to do is select our material that we created, and in this case, it was Circle Emissive. Now you can see that our emissive color is showing. And of course, if you want to be able to use your Color Over Life node, like so, and now you can see that it starts out as orange, goes to white, you do need this particle color, and you need to multiply it towards your final output of your texture. And so now you can see that it's getting the particle color, multiplying it here, and it's going into both base color and emissive color. So, I'm going to close that. And so what we need to do is first off, let's go ahead and get our colors kind of right. So let's spawn in another uh, array. So you just add another point to this curve. And so let's go ahead and make this black at zero. And then let's just go ahead and say, okay, uh, let's make uh, this right here like 0.5 and we're going to make this like a bright orange and then we'll type 5 in red to boost the colors a little bit and then you can see everything in the viewport is black still because we don't have anything in this third point that we just added let's make that right there one now you can see that the particles kind of start out as black fade from uh, like a low red to a super bright red go back to red and then back to black. And so uh, that's basically it. And if we want to, we can actually make this right here something like 
0.55, so it's closer, and then they go into black uh, even quicker. So from here, let's go ahead and just do our initial size, and let's do uh, like 6 and 2. That way we have some good variation, and right now we can't really see much, so let's change our background color to something uh, more on the gray side. You click this button up here, and then choose your background color. So now we go ahead and move this right here back down. And now what we need to do uh, to get the vector field in here is we need to create a type data. So you right click right here and then go down. Uh, it says type data, click new GPU sprite. So now these GP, oh, sorry, these particles will run on the graphics card instead of your CPU. So to do this now we just need to uh, increase our spawn rate. Let's do like 5,000. And then from here, let's go ahead and right click again and bring in a local vector field. And so uh, we've already drug our uh, vector field that we exported from Vector Region into Unreal Engine 4, at least we should have, pretty sure we did. Uh, let's see, yep. So we put it in, and of course you can always do the import button and then go out and, and find your uh, vector field, wherever it is at. So, what we need to do is, whoops, messing up here. All right, back to our particle system. So now we just need to load our tutorial particle system, or sorry, our tutorial vector field, or a turbulent vector field. And first thing is, let's kind of go over these things. Uh, if you go to view, you can uh, click vector fields, and now you'll be able to see the vector field. Another thing before we uh, go any further, just click outside in like this void and then go down to bounds and then click used uh, fixed relative bounding box and then just type like negative a thousand and both of these doesn't really matter what the size is and the reason I'm doing this is so that whenever we go off the camera the particles don't disappear and bug us okay so from here let's go ahead and just go over each of these little things so relative translation just basically means how high up is this vector field going to be. And just for demonstration's sake, I'm going to change this intensity to 500. So now you can see that as we move the vector field, uh, the particle changes. And so basically it just moves uh, the location of the vector field. So that's what translation does. Rotation rotates the vector field. Relative scale will scale the vector field, as you can see. And then, I'm oh, sorry, I did zero. And then of course, tightness is how close does it follow to the vectors. And so if we do a tightness of zero, you can see that they're just kind of barely influenced by it and just kind of flow around. And we probably want to change this lifetime to two seconds on both minimum and maximum. Now we can see that we're uh, emitting this line. And so of course, if we do uh, a tightness of one, it's going to directly follow each vector and the reason why it is going just right here is because that's basically where the center point is. So it's spawning in the center. And if we translated this, it should go back up to the center. Okay. So now, what do we need to do? Uh, we need to bring in an initial location and a sphere. Now you can see that we got this crazy thing going on in the center. And uh, basically, let's just go ahead and make it a size of uh, 200. Uh, and the size of our vector field, if we go to viewport settings and bounding box settings, we can see that it's negative 256 by 256. And so basically, it goes negative 256 to zero and then to 256. So the entire length of this is 512 units. And if we're doing the start radius, obviously the radius is half of the distance across a circle, and the diameter is the full circle. So if we do 256 in here, it should extend all the way to the very edge of this box, which it does. And so the other thing here is if we look back at our thing inside our, our tutorial particle in the level, you can see that it's certainly not spawning in a sphere. It's spawning in something like a disk. And so how do I get that? So what you do is whenever you click in sphere, uh, we uncheck positive Z and we uncheck negative Z. And now it's spawning in a disk and going towards the center. And we can see that sometimes, I just saw one, but particles might kind of escape and go out here. Uh, to do that, we can make this say like negative 250 
And that will guarantee that the uh, outside vectors uh, on the edge collect all the particles. So from here, uh, one of the last steps is basically just increasing, um, or sorry, rotating the vector field. So what you do is you right click, you go to vector field and VF rotation rate. And from here, we just do it like 0.1 in X. Now we can see that the vector field is moving. And from here, let's go ahead and turn uh, from view and uncheck ve view vector field. Now you can see that we have this turbulent inward motion that is rotating the vector field. So uh, I believe I went over everything. Uh, obviously there's like tile X and tile Y, tile Z, and basically that's just saying if any particles escape, so let's just do like um, 500. Then you'll see that we can have uh, multiple points that are being attracted to. And so if we uh, drug this particle out into the world. Let's go to Content Browser, Particles, Tutorial, and then you would see that it would look something like that. Let me go ahead and delete that one. And so then it would look something like this, and you can see that it's going to a bunch of different points. And if I made it so that in our particle system, uh, we turned off the rotation, then this right here is something what, what it would look like. Because basically, it's just tiling the vector field, so it's just copying and pasting this, and just pasting it over here. And so since we have a spawn radius for our sphere that's bigger, or technically our disk in this case, that's bigger than the vector field, it's going to look like it's tiling. So it's basically just duplicating it. And if we're rotating it, obviously it's going to rotate everything in 3D space. And so basically you can just say, hey, this vector field is tiling infinitely that direction, and that direction, and that direction, so in all axes. Uh, I guess the last part here uh, to really show... Uh, yep, so that pretty much goes over everything on the vector field. Obviously, uh, if you want it to be like a 0.5 in tightness so that it's not as influenced by it, you can do that. Obviously, you can do zero, and then you can see that it's just kind of like an accelerator, and then from here, it's more like, uh, or sorry, it's probably more like velocity in the other case, and in this case, it's more acceleration to a certain point. And you can see that since our disk is bigger, it's not even affected by the vector field. So the arrows have to actually be touching the particles for it to be affected. In our software, you might see that if particles go outside the bending box, they're still affected. But in Unreal Engine 4, it does not work that way. Um, the last part is really just the uh, center. And so we can just go here and bring another circle emissive. And we just go to our color over life and change it to all black. And of course, you can do like a initial color or whatever and it'll start out as black. We can go ahead and turn off the initial velocity. Let's make the initial size like 75, something like that. And now uh, let's go back to our sphere and make the distance 250. And there you go. Now you have uh, particles going into the center and it's kind of like a, a huge standing wave. And we can boost this to like 50,000. It's ridiculous. And you probably wouldn't want to do this in the game because it's a lot of processing power. But you can do it to kind of see uh, just how crazy and intense this vector field is. And so this right here is what it ends up looking like. And if we see it inside of our actual game viewport, this is what it looks like. And so that's basically it. That's how you get vector fields from Vector Regen into Unreal Engine 4.